Hi everyone. Welcome back to another fantastic episode of Painting at Home. I am Jean Moss. As you can see, I'm a little disheveled today because I learned a very important lesson that not all squirrels are nice. So welcome back. It's so good to see everybody. I have today a wonderful, wonderful sort of project that we're going to get started on. This project today is in fact going to be a gardenscape. I love a good gardenscape. I don't know if any of you have ever been in a garden. If you have, I'd love for you to write me and tell me what it's like because I've never been in one. But we're going to explore a few things today. So, I have my smaller brush and I've got my fantastic music going. So I'm going to start a little bit with my smaller brush. And that brush, we're going to start off with a little bit of green. So I've got a little bit of green here and then I'm going to capture a little bit of brown. We have this wonderful paint palette we've been working with, and I've mixed it up with these sort of iridescent paints. So the iridescent paints give it a little bit of a shiny factor, but for now, we're gonna just go with that matte painting. So I've got a little bit of green and a little bit of that brown, and I'm just gonna start to draw a little bit of grass here. Just a little bit of grass. Here's a little bit of grass. And I'm gonna create just kind of a look, just sort of a scape for which my flowers are going to hang. this painting moving and grooving. We have our green, we have our brown, and I'm going to come over here on this side. Now the brown captures a little bit of the fact that grass is not always perfectly green. It does sometimes have a little bit of brown, and we're starting off again with watercolor. And I'm just starting off with our little hillside. So here's a little hillside. As those of you joining us today, is a little bit of a garden party, if you will. drawing a few things just to kind of outline where our garden is going to be. Now one thing I've seen in plenty of photographs on Google of gardens is that there's sometimes a little bit of a pathway. Now I have this wonderful sort of bronze color in my iridescent painting and I'm going to grab once again a little bit of that brown and oh how about a little bit of black. Why not? Gosh darn it. And I'm going to make a little cobblestone. Now this is so fun. Cobblestone, for those of you who don't know, is stonework that people used to use on the streets in olden days. Now some places you can still find cobblestone. I invite you to look out for some. So I'm going to draw a little bit of just rocks. Look at that. There's a little cobblestone pathway. And now we'll go this way as well. And I'm going to just thin it out because that path is going to just kind of disappear. Here's our path. Once again, my brown, my black, and a little bit of that iridescent. And let's go ahead and fill that in. Here's our cobblestone. And I might have a little bit of fun with the texture layer. There we go. Now in front of this, I might even go a little crazy. Why not? And make a little bit of pond. I'm starting off, for those of you joining me, with my thinner brush today because we want to go ahead and outline how our garden party or our garden is going to look. So we've got a little hillside and then we also have a little bit of cobblestone and now we're going to start to create little areas of different kinds of bushes and flowers. I just love bushes and flowers and gall darn it, why don't I start with a little bit of my glitter paint. I do have some glitter paint and I just adore it. I just adore it. I'm going to really go ahead and just grab as much as I can. I'm going to start to create little bits of bushes. Here's a bush. Oh yes. And maybe over here is one kind of flower. Here's a bush and I'm just kind of going down. Down and down and down. There's one bush. Look at that. How nicely that turns out. And I think the smaller brush for this is really the answer. Oh, I really do. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of that greenish sort of black with my glitter. Really, 
chest, doing a lot of wrist work. It's all in the wrist. We talked a little bit about that yesterday, just sometimes letting your hand do the job. Sometimes your hand does a better job than your eyes. And here we go. Let's create another, maybe a taller little bush up here. I hope everyone's having a wonderful Tuesday. I can't believe it's already Tuesday. It still feels like Monday over here in my studio, and I'm just going to let that bush kind of come down. Texture or something. Those of you just joining in, we're drawing a little bit of a garden party. And we're having a, a garden, for, for those of you who don't know, um, it's just really a land full of flowers. You can have any kinds of flowers you want. One thing I might add in my garden as well is, of course, a tree. You all know me and how much I love my trees. I do love trees. I'm going to this time add a little bit of purple to my trees. Now, the flowers will come later. We're starting to get our greenery in first. Greens come first and then we'll flower later. So my tree, I'm gonna add a little bit of purple, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of that green, and oh, maybe a tree lives, oh, somewhere back here. There's a tree. What about that? It's kind of a fun little purple branch. We're gonna play a lot with textures. I'm gonna put one right back here, too. Oh, look at that. Oh, and maybe right here. Yes, oh, just gorgeous. I'm gonna add a little bit more of those, because I'm so in love with this color. I'm just absolutely attracted to it in such a very profound way. Grabbing that, and oh, let's grab our blue. There we go, and a little bit of that purple. Oh, 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 yes, 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 and yes. Draw a nice thick trunk here. I've got purple, I've got this wonderful green. I'm just adding a little bit of branches maybe to these trees. Maybe this one's a little bit taller. I love doing an upward stroke with my trees. It gives it that height, right? With that upward stroke. And you might use a little bit more of your arm in a full stroke of a tree branch or a tree trunk. Here we go. We're grabbing that purple again. Grabbing the purple. I'm going to grab the green a little bit now, too. And we're just going to keep on that. Oh, yes, that's gorgeous. It's just beautiful. Well, maybe, oh, I don't know. One extra tree here. That goes behind a little bit. Those of you joining, welcome. Today is a garden party, so I'm just going to draw a bunch of plants and flowers and just see what happens. It's very wonderful. And one thing I love about gardens, too, there's a lot of wildlife in the garden. So we're just kind of creating a little bit. Now, one thing I'm going to capture down here, I'm also going to go ahead and draw maybe a little bit of a pond who lives in our garden. I was so inspired by the bridge we did yesterday that I thought I'd elaborate on that garden idea. So we're just kind of getting into our garden and I found the most wonderful sort of lighter purple, more of a violet really, and I'm gonna grab that. And we're just gonna keep kind of drawing these bigger trees. There's gonna be one that lives right back here. Just a big old purple tree branch. You of course can pick what color your tree branch is. I'm gonna make this one a big boy. This one comes all the way behind this bush. Oh, yes. Let's just blend that in. This is gorgeous. And this is going to run all the way up. And let's go ahead and add a little, maybe a little bit of life on that top of that tree. I'm going to grab that green again. One thing about gardens is they can be anything you want them to be. That's what's so wonderful about gardens. From what I have read, from what I have seen on the internet, it can really just be anything. So I'm going to just start to add some texture onto this. Oh, yes. And I'm using, once again, that wrist. I'm going to draw this all the way down. It's going to come right behind here. And then let's just get some texture up there. And this tree is just going to run right off the page. Right off the page. And just penetrate the top of our canvas. to see some depth in the back. So I've drawn a little pathway, and now I'm going to add a little bit of hillside in the back. So I'm going to grab a lighter green and a little bit of that black. And I'm really, really leaning into the glitter colors because the garden is just such a magical place. So we're just drawing a little bit, and I'm just going to draw a little bit of escape in the back here now, too. Just behind. Here's my escape. Who 
us where that path is going to go. Maybe to a magical land, a secret land, a secret garden. Oops. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw that on this side too. Maybe a little plant right over here. This guy lives right down here. It's just going to run right into that pathway. And I will flower these plants. I will add a couple of flowers. And who knows, if there are too many flowers, I'll deflower them too. We'll see what happens. But for now, we're just drawing in the greenery. Get started with the greenery. Decide where your bushes live. Where does your bush live? And ask yourself that question. And then we find our scape in the back. Now, I'm drawing a little bit lighter of a scape in the back. We will add some water and some rocks down here as well. And I'm just getting this greenery in. Here we go. And it's going to run right into that bush. Here we go. That's beautiful. I'll fill that in with my larger sort of brush later, but we want that path to just kind of disappear. That path is just going to go right away, and maybe we add a little bit more of that brown and more of that cobblestone. We just get rid of that path. And then we'll circle that motion because, as I said, it's a little cobblestone, so that's where that path is going to go. Oh, that's just terrific. Who knows? Somewhere in the background. Somewhere in the background. Let's, let's go ahead and change out to our bigger brush. This brush. I love my big brushes. My big brushes and my big bushes. And of course my big trees. I'm going to take this brush and I'm actually going to take a little bit of that green and a little bit of purple. What a wonderful combination of color. I'm just going to fill in this grass here. I'm going to add a little bit of that black too. So what I'm going to do is just kind of fill this texture in right here. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of sweep. A little bit of a sweep. A little bit of a sweep. And just do a little blending. Oh, and I don't know what your gardens look like at home. But I invite you to imagine, what does a garden look like to you? Just adding a little bit of sweep here, and then we'll sweep all the way down and just kind of blend on this. There we go. We're just doing a little blend here, and that bigger brush should do the trick. Should do the trick. Let's go ahead and get into that pond, shall we? Oh boy. Jumping into water. And you know what that means. Fun with the textures. Good kids, tennis shoes, but it was completely worth it. Completely worth it. Here we go, we're just drawing that in. And I'm going to just kind of give this a little bit of texture. And then, oh, there comes our little pond. Now, here's what we're going to do today. Oh boy, how fun is this going to be? I really am feeling a little bit crazy about texture. So, I'm going to add a little bit of texture in my water. I'm going to grab a little bit of blue, but then I'm going to grab a little of this sparkly blue. And oh, what's this? Why not? What the hey? How about a little bit of white? And some of you are saying, Jean, white and water. I had no idea. I had just no idea, but we're going to do it anyways. And I'm going to just draw some lines, some lines. I'm not even going to fill in all of this. I just want lines to sort of capture this very beautiful water. Look at that. And there's our little bit of pond. Look at that. <gasps> clean up these edges on our mountains and then we're going to add some flowers. I would love to hear from you. What is your favorite flower? Oh, I don't know what mine is. I do love a good pansy. Maybe a couple of florals. Although Florida is not really a flower so much as it is a state. Who knows? Maybe there's a flower called Florida somewhere. I don't know. I'm just going to clean up this little edge here. Let's make sure we don't get too much droppage here. We don't want too many droppings in our paintings. Just maybe a couple of droppings, but not too many. There we go. Blending and blending. And I'm just creating a little shadow. A little shadow. And I'm just kind of blending all this. Oh boy. I do love to blend, but we do want to keep some of that texture. So this is just turning out very beautifully, and we're just going to blend it all. I say it's about time we add some wonderful flowers. And what better way to add flowers than a little bit of different paint? So I'm going to go ahead and grab some flowers, maybe on some of these bushes. Maybe a couple of, I think, rose. I think rose might be a good one. So we're just going to add a little bit of flower here. There's one. There's one. 
There's one. Maybe a cluster. It's so fun to mix up your materials, and I invite you to find whatever, whatever you can find at home. Just whatever feels good to you. Maybe it's a little bit of cookie dough in your fridge. Use it. Why not? Creating a little bit of flower over here. Maybe these are rose bushes or bleeding hearts or something. I'm not really sure what a bleeding heart is, but I imagine a lot of butterflies lost their lives. Who knows? Who knows? And let's just add a couple more flowers. I'm just dabbing a couple of flowers. Okay. Just getting some texture. And I'm really just, again, putting it on the wrist. You can really rely on your wrist here. Sometimes you might have to stretch it out. That is okay. So I'm just grabbing a couple more little bits of flower here. And, oh, I might even go a little crazy on this plant. This bush over here. Absolutely go crazy with your bushes. Your bush is your bush. You do whatever you want with it. Let's keep going. I just want to capture a little bit more. Oh, maybe a couple up here. Maybe a couple up here. That's so wonderful. And maybe a couple over here. This is just turning out absolutely swimmingly. Sometimes, again, you just don't know. You just don't know how well something is going to turn out until you give it a try. I have the most wonderful color of marker. And this one doesn't have a name, so I'll give it a name. Maybe a, maybe a, a petunia pink. How about that? And we're just going to add oh, maybe a couple of little doodads on these plants here. I'm just going to add like a little color. A little color. And I'm really just drawing, as you can see, tiny circles. Just tiny circles here. And I'm anchoring down again using that wrist. And we can do a lot of fun things with marker. Whatever you want to do. And we're just adding a couple of little doodads here. Just a little flower. And we're going to go ahead and add a couple over here. Very versatile, the marker. Such a wonderful material to add. And I'm just adding a couple of little doodads over here. thinking in the background there's going to be another tree somewhere. I just feel a tree survives and lives right in that background here. But I'm going to finish up first a little marker and I'm starting to see the glitter really shine through and that is a really special thing. When you can see the glitter in your paintings you know you've done something right. It's just wonderful. Here we go. And maybe just a couple over here. And these flowers are budding just beautifully. Just beautifully. We're just going to do a little more blending. Let's get onto that tree, shall we? Oh, I'm such a tree lover. I cannot express how much I just absolutely adore trees. And I absolutely adore this periwinkle color. So we're gonna jump on back into that. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of that greenish, bluish, and I'm just gonna kind of fill it over here a little bit. Oh, what a gorgeous little shading. Absolutely, why not? Add a little texture to that bad boy right there. And now we're gonna jump into that tree that I see kind of living in the background. Sometimes you don't know what lives in your paintings until you get started on them. That's the joy and the fun. Exploring and playing around with your paints in the background. So this one lives way back here. Way back here. Oh yes. And I'm gonna just make this one the girthiest one of the bunch. It lives in the back. And again, I'm doing that upstroke. I'm stroking upwards. You will appreciate a good upward stroke. I absolutely promise you that. Here we go. I think there's a rock somewhere underneath it. I'm just going to capture a little bit of rock. And I'm doing a little circular motion on that. There's our rock. Good. And then I think there's a rock somewhere behind it, but we'll just go ahead and imagine it. And I'm just going to stroke upwards again. I might leave a little white on this just to capture that texture. And now let's make sure we get our top. At the top, this one I think is going to go off, off the page. Oh, a nice, thick, and girthy trunk. I believe is just always the answer. It gives it so much life. Oh, who knows? And maybe like a little sort of shadow on this one. Look at that. Maybe a little, little shadow. Here's our upward stroke. And let's fill that bad boy right in there. 
I think there's going to be, oh, probably some kind of a bird or something that lives in there. Maybe we draw a little hole there for a bird. I think that would be very lovely. And then we'll blend this all in, finish up our sky, and it's just going to be exquisite. I have decided I will be drawing a bird hole in this big old tree in the background. Well, let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown and a little bit of black because the holes in trees can be very dark. So, well, let's say our bird hole all oh, lives right here. Oh dear. There it is indeed. Maybe squirrels go in there, I don't know. Maybe there's a bird's nest in there somewhere. There's our bird hole. And then here's just like a little ledge for it. That's wonderful. Let's give a little texture to this. There we go. Texture.
brush, play with your materials, play with textures. What lives in this forest, perhaps? Hopefully not the squirrel I saw today. That was not the nicest squirrel in the bunch. But I'm sure maybe it was just having a rough day. But in this garden, no squirrel could have a rough day. I'm pretty sure. Look around you, find the art inside, and 